And so with that, right on cue, our phenomenal CEO and, and, and actress, Patty Arias, has graced us with her presence. And a special shout out to Patty. She works so hard on this conference that she does such an amazing job. And putting all this together, uh, it is no easy feat, Patty, and you do it every year. So thank you. You do a great job. And everybody, everybody does. And I know he's going to get an award, but I have to say this. And I told everybody, if it wasn't for that gentleman there, this would have not happened. And I tell you that from the bottom of my heart. Yes. I struggled and struggled, and he did it. That gentleman right there. And thank I you, Commissioner Gavetta. I was really thank you for believing in us. Thank you so much. And Joe. Our president, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to. I want to put something, like at least our logo or something. Put that on. Not easy being a showrunner, man. <laughs> Really yeah. Can we have something on the screen? I don't know if it, maybe we have to do we have to turn it on again. All right. That's all I wanted to show you guys. To, I'm not showing another sizzle reel. <laughs> no more trailers. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so Patty, do you want to say a few words officially on the mic before we get started? I think I just did. You did. And this is like just a very happy Yeah. And you're from the theater, so you project very well. Thank you. I need the microphone, unfortunately. But, uh, so we're starting with our Miami Projections Film Festival, right? So, I already described it, so I don't have to go into it again, uh, what this was all about. Uh, but it really was a labor of love, and, and again, thanks to all of you who submitted shorts and trailers and narrative content and animation, so much great work uh, that we've been celebrating over the years. And we have a few awards that we did want to give out this evening. And so we are going to start with a, a couple of these awards. And I just, I need to switch to my notes here. So I'm gonna do that with this hand. I'm right-handed, but I'm left-handed on the phone. I don't know. Can Joe be Mr. Golden Orange? Is Joe here? Mr. Chi? Come join us. While I look this up, I would like for you to say a few words as well. And I really want to give a shout out to Kama Gold, the best chamber in Florida. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm very humbled to be up here, especially among uh, people like uh, Commissioner Gabella, Rick Beasley, our executive director of the greatest workforce system, I would say, in the country. I'll write you a check for that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, I'm really, not, I'm really not kidding. When when he first came to workforce, we were so disorganized. Uh, I, I think the governor was thinking about closing us down. It, it was really chaotic at that time. But he came in. He came in with his magic touch from Missouri. He was, a, he was actually the state workforce director of the whole state of Missouri at the time. And he chose Miami. I, I don't know why, but you know, it was, it was chaotic. Uh, but he has, he has streamlined everything so well that nowadays, whatever you need, just touch a couple of buttons on a computer and you've got all the information, all the statistics, and everything you need to run what I believe is the best workforce, not only is in Florida, I believe in the world. You should be the next Secretary of Labor. <laughs> and Commissioner Gabela, we've known you for a long time. You used to come to my father's house for the parties in those days. And I, I, I forgot about that. I had forgotten about that except for the time when you were elected and you asked me, how's your father? I said, what? I said, yeah, yeah I used to go to your house. And we used to go to those big parties you had, and then I remembered, oh yeah, now I remember. Thank you very much also for all your help. What you've done is really, really uh, miraculous for Camacol and for MMFM. Camacol, as you know, is one of our neighborhood organizations. It started as a small chamber of commerce by the legendary Luis Sabines. Uh, during that time, it grew from a small, 
Chamber of Commerce representing grocers, and nowadays uh, we represent, let me give you a little bit of history of how we've evolved. Back in 1979, we started an alliance of Hispanic and Latin Chambers of Commerce here in the United States. This alliance has grown to approximately 300 Hispanic chambers in the United States, which represent approximately 6 million Hispanic businesses, which serve a community of 65 million Hispanic and Latins in the United States, which last year produced a gross national product of $3.2 trillion. What does that mean? Fifth largest economy in the world. Wow. Internationally, we also have a network of chambers starting all the way from Spain and going throughout Latin America. Out of those chambers, most of them are national or regional chambers, which have chambers under them. And we're talking about Camacol as an international network of over 900 chambers. Thank you all very much for having contributed to these efforts. Your father, I know, contributed a lot to this as well. It's part of our legacy, our, local, our legacy here in the local community, which has become a worldwide community. So thank you all very much, and I will let JL continue with the process. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so getting into our awards, like I said, we're going to start with Miami Projections Film Festival, and we're going to start with, uh, I'm just going to go in a kind of a random order. Uh, we're going to go with the best foreign language film that we saw. In other words, a, a language other than English and Spanglish that is the award. It has to be all in Spanish or English, no, no back and forth. So that is going to go to Galapa Fenders iCartoons. so supportive of us all the time and the rest of the gang that we don't know that well. Thank you all for coming tonight and this is a beautiful thing. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah, all right, let's go. Is there like a time limit on speeches? I don't have an envelope, I have an iPhone. <laughs> and it works the same way. Probably, probably no, five Yes. Five what? Five Something like that. Five minutes. Maybe. Something like that. All right, so now we're going to just jump to, uh, let's go with the best sizzle reel now. Uh, the best sizzle reel or trailer this year uh, will go to Living Con Los Cabo, Pequeño Pictures, directed by Mariana Serrano. Uh, So much JL, Patty, everyone on the team for having us first of all and we're very proud to be here representing our Miami community that's what we're all about we really want to showcase Miami stories we believe in them with all our hearts and we're very happy to be here and, and accepting this thank you so much same <laughs> thank, you. thank you guys congratulations all right moving right along uh, we're going to go with the best animated short. Um, I'm not sure if anyone's in the room or not, but this was really a fantastic short. Uh, we're so honored to have this group with us this year. It is Spice Frontier from Steamroller Studios, uh, directed by Jaleel Sadul. If anyone is here from Steamroller, if not, we will make sure to get it to you. So, I humbly accept award on behalf of Steamroller Studios. 
Great, so we will give the last film award. This is for the best live action narrative short in the English language. So uh, this one is going to be announced momentarily as soon as I can find it on my phone. Uh, I'm gonna scroll down here. No, it's not this one. Aha, here it is. No Dogs Die, directed by William Christopher Rose. which uh, just worked perfectly for the police station. Um, this is a story that's really important to me. I've, I've grown up with animals my whole life, and I hate in movies when dogs get hurt or injured, so I made a story about a slasher who kills people who are mean to dogs. And in addition to making this fun movie with an important premise, uh, I also created the No Dogs Die Fund, which is a part of 501c3 with the Miami Foundation. So we support rescue efforts in Miami, we support offsetting veterinary costs, and we help like uh, retired canine officers and, and their dogs go through that transition process. So it's something that, you know, while trying to make a fun film to bring awareness to it, we're also trying to help the Miami community. So thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you very much, great job, congratulations. Okay, so moving right along, because we're moving right along. Yes. Uh, we're gonna get to our signature Golden Orange Awards now. Uh, and so I am, uh, these awards recognize outstanding achievements in creativity, storytelling, and production quality. The recipients have pushed the boundaries of the medium, introduced by innovative concepts, and made a lasting impact on audiences in the industry, uh, as well as uh, everywhere else. You wanna go up? All right, Patty's coming up. Old for Patty. Be Thank you. Orange. Yes, you have the right attire. Yeah. You look very golden orangey. Yeah. More golden than orangey, but it works. All right, so should we? Yeah. So a tradition here is that we read your bios before you come up. So you don't have to do it yourself, but you can say cool shit after. That's fine. Uh, so we're going to get started with our first recipient. Uh, this individual uh, has been writing television for three decades, most recently as an executive producer and director of the ABC series 911. He was the showrunner and executive producer of From Dust Till Dawn, the series. He was also an executive producer of the internationally acclaimed spy series Nikita, and has written and produced for Heroes, Journeyman, Invasion 24, and The Pretender. He's a Cuban American. Uh, and was a consultant for the Emmy-winning HBO film for Love or Country, the Arturo Sandoval story. He has created several pilots and developed the series Mortal Kombat Conquest. He's a former computer game designer. He worked on Spycraft, the great game, which was named Macworld's Game of the Year in 1995. He also started his career at the Miami Herald, and I must say was also a University of Miami alumni, so a fellow hurricane. Welcome Juan Carlos Cotto to the stage. Thank you so much. I thought I was getting a participation trophy, frankly. <laughs> I thought it was just, you know, thanks for coming. Um, look, I, we've talked a lot about the, that, that catchphrase, <laughs> hyper-local, has been bandied about a lot, you know, this, this, during the conference, and I think hyper-local is so important, you know, every project I'm on, I'm always trying to bring a Cuban story or a Miami story to the fore, even if it's a project that's, you know, not anywhere near that. I worked on a show called Standoff, we did 17 episodes in 2006, and Gina Torres started the show, and... No one ever paused to say, what's her backstory? Where she's from? And I'm like, where's she from? And I go, well, you know, she's Cuban. So why don't we make the character Cuban? So we made the character Cuban. And it's always about that hyper-local and, and, and hyper-focus. And I think it's so important in our storytelling. You know, that's where I come from. It was the first thing I said in my seminar. And I, and I don't even want to forget that. Um, but second to that, I think the, the important thing in these conferences is learning. And... I, you know, to quote two different directors, right? Two great directors. One is Joe Menendez, who I've worked with 
and who said today in his panel that he's still learning. And I agree with that, you know, more than anything. I, I'm always learning. And, and the second director was Steven Soderbergh, who said, talent plus perseverance equals luck. And in sitting in on those pitches and listening to all of you with your ideas and your passion, I just want to thank you for teaching me about passion and perseverance and chasing your dreams because I think that's what we're always doing and it's what we never stop doing. So thanks for inspiring me every day. Right. Testing, one, two, three. All right, moving right along. Um, so this award, hold on guys. to set this up properly. We need music. I know, we need whole music. Yeah. <laughs> you guys can't play music from back then. Oh, wait. Our AV guy left. Yeah, we can do acapella if you guys want to hum along <laughs> to the whole music. That would be really cool. We did a music panel this morning about three of them. So if any composers are still around, maybe you guys... Oh, wait, thank you. Finally, the showrunner showrunning. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, uh, okay, and cut. That gracias. Muy bueno idea. I love it. Okay, so this next uh, Film Impact Award for Global Industry Partner uh, goes to a gentleman who has worked as an independent film and TV and theater producer for over 30 years. His film credits include Henry V, Peter's Friends, Much Ado About Nothing, the Madness of King George, which uh, won the BAFTA for the Outstanding British Film, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, Twelfth Night, The Wings of the Dove, Shakespeare in Love, which also won seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, and four BAFTA Awards, including Best Film, Gangs of New York, uh, Capture the Castle, Chasing Liberty, and A Bunch of Amateurs. In 2010, he produced the BAFTA-nominated my Week with Marilyn, followed in 2011 by Tom Stopper's award-winning adaptation of Parades End for the BBC and HBO. He's also produced The Wipers Times for BBC Two and BBC Four. He's a badass. Let's just welcome him to the stage, David Carpenter. producers, writers, directors, the good stuff gets turned down and just keep going. Uh, and, uh, and I'm still getting stuff turned down and I'll still produce more. So uh, thank you very much. Okay, moving right along, uh, we are going to go to our second Film Impact Global Industry Partner Award. Uh, this individual uh, joined Media Crest as the head of Scripted. He also worked for TV at TVE as the head of the film department between November 27, 2007 and 2010. He founded Convoy Films, from where he has produced and participated in, in several feature film projects. He's also worked as the head of production department at uh, and film producer at Sojatel and the Soja Cine, uh, which was uh, before that, as head of the Spanish and independent film acquisitions at Canal Plus from March 1993, 
and, and as a freelance director, he has been involved as producer or executive producer in more than 20 feature films by directors such as Juan Jose Campanella, Sergio Pablos, Maria Ripoll, Alex de la Iglesia, Enrique Urbizu, Mateo Gil, Javier Fesser, or and Isabel Coiset, among others. Um, so please welcome to the stage Mr. Gustavo Ferrada. significant economic impact, as we've, as we've heard over the last two days. A lot of zeros behind this industry, if we can work with it properly. Uh, and public support is a huge part of that, as we've learned. Uh, but also creates essential jobs, uh, and also fuels the aspirations and dreams of countless individuals right here in our local community of Miami. Embodying the spirit of innovation and opportunity, we want to welcome to the stage, the Honorable Miguel Ángel Gabela, Commissioner, City of Miami. Yeah, so I just want to say thank you, Patty. Tell me too. Thank you very much. And for, for me, 
me, uh, uh, you know, when Patty came into my office and uh, told me what uh, they were doing with the students with animation, uh, I really didn't know what you guys, uh, you know, were about or did. Uh, I came uh, to be a commissioner uh, last, uh, I was born on December 2nd, then we were elected in November. Uh, we didn't make a movie or anything. <laughs> so I, I feel I don't deserve this. We just helped you guys uh, a little bit. And, and thank you for, for what you do. My wife and I are very proud and uh, uh, privileged to be here among you. And uh, keep it going. Keep what you're doing. And I just want uh, one more thing I want to say. Uh, we want to start changing our pattern. We're going to be having, uh, be having a festival on 17th Avenue starting next year. It's going to be River Day uh, Festival with uh, food and wine, so if anybody wants to join or wants to sponsor, please, uh, you can talk to Damien <laughs> right there. <laughs> but thank you again very much. Uh, we're very proud of the, uh, the award that you gave us. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. I know I was missing something. All right, so here we go. Moving right along to a public-private partnership award. Uh, this year's a great Golden Orange Award. Uh, this award goes to an individual who has served as the executive director for the South Florida Workforce Investment Board, SFWIB, which is also known as Career Sorth. Career, what did I say it like that? It's the Warner Brothers cartoons. I'm doing a th the lisp. Uh, Career Sorth, South Florida. Uh, since August of 2005. In this position, he oversees workforce programs in Miami-Dade and Moreau counties with an operating budget of $75 million a year. Uh, he is in charge of one of the nation's most dynamic melting pots, a diverse socioeconomic region. Uh, his vision for Career Source South Florida is to create a model for the nation by establishing a world-class talent supply chain that fosters economic growth. Uh, as well as Career Source South Florida's overacting, overarching strategic priority, which is to support economic development that leads to higher skilled, better paying jobs that improves South Florida's quality of life and strengthens the economy. He has provided leadership for a number of important workforce initiatives, including the development of an online balanced scorecard, deployment of the CSSF mobile workforce assistance centers, five mobile units, development and implementation of the Miami-Dade County First Source Ordinance, uh, the South Florida Workforce State of the Workforce Report, Career Source South Florida, is one of the few local workforce development boards that sponsors career development offices on the campus of partner colleges and universities, including St. Thomas University, Florida Memorial University, and as a way of increasing the talent pool and gaining early access exposure to college graduates. He's just another badass. Let's welcome Dr. Beasley. And Mr. Beasley to the stage. Mr. Rick Beasley, everyone. Just like you, I didn't know who they were talking about. I <laughs> to get a fascinated one, JL, and two, well, Patty. I, I want to thank you all for the opportunity for to be able to be exposed to this industry. Uh, again, as I shared earlier today on the panel, uh, it's an area that I wasn't even looking at. And, and sometimes you're trying to figure out, okay, what is this industry and what's it about? Um, but it's a, you know, it allowed us as a board to be able to see how we can invest in building talent. And then I got a chance to meet David and the wonderful folks Adrian, you guys from, from, from London and to see what you're doing. I want to pick your brains on how we can really expand training opportunities for the citizens in Dade County. Um, but again, I'm, I'm honored. Uh, the work you really are honoring me, you're really honoring the staff. Uh, the Jarvis Washington, who was here earlier. Uh, really, I'm, I'm just a funder. I just say yes. And really, when you have Joe and you have Patty, you can't really tell them no. Okay? Particularly Patty. You can't, you can't tell them. And, and you all know what I'm talking about. You can't tell Patty no. But her passion about how to build a better community. Uh, God has blessed me to be able to be here, to be able to see how we can make investments to help build our community. When you have a leader like Joe, and I said this earlier, uh, 19 years ago, Joe was on the board that approved me being the director here. As I mentioned earlier, if something goes wrong, blame Joe. If things go right, then also congratulate Joe. But the work that we do with Chemical, Patty, you all, is fantastic. And we're, we are going to see how we can build this animation industry here, uh, the, the film industry, and how we can really grow it. We're working with our commissioner and others to see how we can get investment dollars to help bring industry back. 
Yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate that our, our state legislature decided to remove that uh, investment, but we went to work together to see how we can build a, a better industry here, not only in Dade County, but the state of Florida. All right? All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. All right. So now we're moving on uh, to our last couple of announcements. The Corporate Sponsor Award. Uh, obviously, we want to give a big shout out to all of our sponsors, both public and private, for making this event possible. So thanks to all of you uh, for being a part of this uh, amazing event this year. But uh, one individual that we do want to give a special recognition to from Pepsi is Yurandi Jerena. So if you're here, Yurandi, come on down. By the way, Yurandi is also the vice president of Kamakor. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Now, I'm just really happy to be here to be part of uh, the festival and the Pepsi family is really happy to be part of it, okay? So, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and I don't think he's here tonight, but uh, we also want to give a, a very special recognition and shout out to uh, Bar News and Jose Barleta for all his amazing work in developing our websites and all the graphic materials that you see around the conference and those really cool cubes, you know? We talked about getting everybody out of their Zoom box and then we put them into this box, which is kind of fun. It's very ironic. Uh, and so thank you to Mr. Barletta, wherever you are, uh, probably organizing the next Metaverse conference somewhere. Uh, but thank you, Mr. Barletta. So this is the last thing we're gonna be doing tonight, guys, which is very special. I saved it for the end. I teased it earlier. This is the announcement of our inaugural orange list which uh, again has been what we consider the top unproduced screenplays and teleplays uh, from Miami writers. So if you are in the audience and you are a writer on one of these projects or a producer attached to one of these projects, please stand up and be recognized uh, when I read these projects out. And I'm going in alphabetical order, so there is no preference. Doesn't matter, it's ABC order. Uh, the first project is African Nightmare, written by Yinka Amuda. It's a feature film about a brave African girl who fulfills her ambition of becoming a for foreign service officer, but has to fight demonic, malicious, and exceptionally corrupt individuals all the way from her village to her foreign postings. Congratulations, African Nightmare, for making the honor list. The next project is Alex, written by Emilio Mascaro Jr. and Carlos V. Gutierrez uh, for drama series pilot. <laughs> After five years living undercover, an ex-spy must leave behind her suburban life as a mother and wife to expose a plan for creating a unilateral terrorist organization. I want to see that one, yeah. actually. Yeah. And we actually showed the teaser a couple nights ago at the film, it's really good, really good. So that was gonna happen, guys. We're gonna make it happen. Uh, Ava and the Lost Season, written by Elaine Roberts Kirchhoff. It's an animated feature. Uh, I don't know if Elaine is here. Hi, Elaine. You made it. And the Kingdom Tracks, an eternal writer conjured by the King's Evil Son, a young girl embarks on a journey with a whimsical old lady a stone giant and her loyal oversized pit goat to bring back spring and save her younger brother from the clutches of the black cold, an endless spawned by the eternal frost. Sounds good. Very cool. I want to see that one too. I really do. Um, Beat Lingo, written by Jose Navas. I don't know if he's here. Uh, it's a feature. Congratulations. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to skip the long ones, I think. Uh, and we're just going to mention the film. Best Laid Plans, written by Juliet A. Romero. Are you here, Juliet? Congratulations. I will read your log line since you're here. A woman shattered by the revelation of her boyfriend's long-term infidelity enlists her friends in a vengeful prank to end their relationship once and for all, only to have the tables turn when they unwittingly entangle themselves with dangerous criminals seeking repayment for the boyfriend's massive debts, leading to a hiring quest to save a kidnapped friend and settle scores with both the deceitful boyfriend and the menacing underworld. 
Congratulations, Juliet. You are on our honors list. <laughs> Call Me Out made the list, guys. Congratulations <laughs> to the Call Me Out folks that are in the room. Close to the Edge, written by Karen D. McKinnon. Are you here, Karen? I am. Congratulations, Karen. The daughter of a prominent U.S. politician must force her way out of captivity after her best friend betrays her. El Candy Mi Papa Cubano, written by Armando Pastor. Are you here, Armando? Congratulations, Armando, wherever you are. Gator Boots, written by Mariana Serrano, made the list. It's a feature in this coming-of-age story, and a rebellious 76-year-old woman seeks to regain her independence while facing the harsh reality of aging in the American South. Mariana, you're here. Congratulations. Jack, written by Eric Gennard, is a comedy series. Eric's not here, so we're moving on. Javelin, written by Ron Tarowski. Are you here, Ron? Congratulations, Ron. <laughs> Lady Luciano, written by Ethan Banville. He's not here, moving on. Live on the Radio by Jack Charles and Anthony Montgomery. No. Miami Ghost Story by Anna Lydia Ochoa. Also not here. Paper got stuck. Yeah, hold music. No, we're good. Uh, I think this narration would be more inspirational. We're like, if one of our composers could have made a song for us and we'd just been like, maybe a live orchestra next year? That would be kind of cool. Uh, My Grandfather Was a Porn Star by Javier Mayol, David Vargas. Are you here, Javi? A dysfunctional family hanging by a thread gets more than they bargained for when their free spirit grandmother, a former porn star, comes to visit. That does sound very Miami in a weird way. <laughs> to think that our grandmothers could have been porn stars. It's kind of weird. The 70s was a long time ago. The new Dirk Diggler's coming. <laughs> I like this one. Uh, the feature adaptation of No Dogs Die, written by Chris Watson. So, uh, congratulations, Chris. A mass murderer who kills anyone abusive to dog who returns after a 10-year hiatus. A teen whose parents were murdered by him as a child must survive a week of terror to end the cycle. Really cool shit, man. I like it. Out of Habit, written by Danny Duffy and Meredith Bay. Are you here, Danny or Meredith? Congratulations, guys. This is an action series pilot when a nosy reporter becomes interested in reviving a 30-year-old local murder case, a sinful mother superior with a wicked past must thwart the investigation long enough to rob the convent blind before skipping town for good. Sounds really good, too. It's like when we used to read the TV Guide and know what's good. This is exactly what we were talking about. Really good shit. Out of the Rough by William Hornick. Are you here, William? No? Okay, moving on. It's a feature, by the way, if you're interested. All the agents, Craig, if you're in the audience, will share the list with you right away. Uh, Pass the Guard, written by John Garcia. Um, I believe that we have, not the writer, but the producers attached in the room. Uh, I see you back there, Carla. Congratulations. An amazing local producer, by the way, made critical thinking. I had the pleasure of working on that project. Really a phenomenal Phenomenal project, and this one's gonna be really good too. It's a feature. Brandon Garza tries to step in where his late brother Eddie's MMA career left off. While overcoming adversity and addiction, he rises the ranks to quickly ascend, transcending expectations of all, including the mafiosos that wanna bring him down. Very cool. Can't wait to see that one. The Poison Christ by Ricardo Canchola. Are you here, Ricardo? Okay, it's a feature, moving on. Record Man, written by Peter Capo and Rolando Viñas. It's a drama series pilot. I'm gonna read this logline, it's a great product, which by the way was one of the finalists for Upstream last year. So we're hoping that in a few months we're gonna hear who the new Upstreamers are. Uh, But Pete was the first out of Miami, out of our program, so congratulations. 1970s Miami, a tenacious record producer elevates TK Records from Hialeah, by the way, from financial peril to disco dominance, championing society's sideline amid greed and treachery. That's a great series. 
The test written by Gary Jonti. Are you here, Gary? It's a feature. Moving on. Tio Papi in Miami, the feature sequel and spin-off series written by Joey Didio and Jared Iverson. I know Joey's not here, he's in New York, so congrats to Joey. Vows written by Karen Hall. It's a drama series pilot. You made the list again. When his superiors want to get rid of him without fingerprints, a Jesuit priest transferred from a prestigious position at a Vatican University to a menial position at the priest residence in a Catholic university. Miami's got a lot of great Catholic churches and schools, so that makes sense. It's really cool to shoot that one here. While Coeur, written by Andres Irias. Are you here, Andres? It's a drama pilot, and we can't wait to see it. So that is the inaugural Orange List. That brings to a conclusion this evening's program, so I want to say a big thank you to all of you again. Give yourselves a round of applause. Again, to all our amazing speakers, uh, our sponsors and our public leaders who made this possible. 14 years and counting, the MMFM rocks. So thank you, Patty, as well, and Joe Chi, and Comical, and everyone. And Career Source of Florida, the city of Miami. You guys are awesome, Pepsi. Thank you so much. Uh, and have a great night, and we'll see you next year. Woo!